All right, how is it going, everyone? I hope you're all doing a fantastic during your mornings, evenings, you know, lunchtime, whatever, whatever time it is. Welcome to Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders, their visions for the future, and how the two collide, and anything else we talk about. Today, we are talking to Alex Beller, one of the co-founders of Postscript. Alex, how are you doing today? Doing great, Matt. Thank you. I hope it's okay if I sip a coffee while we chat. I encourage you to sip a coffee while we chat. I have had two today already, and it probably shows because I'm energetic, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of coffee at all times. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's great to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So, you know, let's just dive right into it. You know, I'm, I'm very familiar with what Postscript is, but a lot of the listeners may, may not know what it is. So if you can give, you know, a, a little idea to listeners of what your company is, that would be a good start. Sure. So for those within the tech or internet marketing realm, uh, the easiest way to explain Postscript is by saying that we're MailChimp for text messaging, right? So a very easy to use platform for uh, companies to text their customers. The more specific and really the like honest answer is that we're an SMS marketing automation platform specifically for e-commerce stores, meaning an e-commerce store can utilize Postscript to text their customers for things like a shipping notification when a package goes out or uh, like a, an alert when like a brand drops its new pair of shoes and like the VIPs want to know exactly when that new product drops. So that's what we do. That's, that is awesome. And it's also, you know, a little surprising. I was under the, uh, you know, a year ago, you know, when I first heard about Postscript, I'm like, wow, this is, this is a thing, you know, you can build a, a pretty big company or a high potential company, you know, off of the text message market, you know, tell me, or the SMS market, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, educate me a bit on the SMS market and where the opportunity is? Because from an onlooker side, it's just like, I didn't see it until I, until, you know, I, I met you guys. Sure. So it, it's a really interesting space because on one hand it feels still very early and very underutilized, right? Like if you think about personal communication mechanisms and how they're commercialized, like email was for a long time, like really just a personal tool, but now it's had what a amazing, like 20 some year run as like, an incredible commercial tool for businesses and for people to build online businesses. And, and uh, a similar thing is happen is slowly happening with SMS where for many years now it's been used as a personal communication tool and really only more recently brands are starting to utilize it as a communication channel with their customers. And so things started out like we all know Twilio that's been a big success as like the API layer that lets businesses like us build infrastructure and specific apps on top of it to send out texts. But a lot of the earlier use cases have been not really revenue generating for SMS. So the, the use cases that people run into all the time are like two factor authentication, right? You try to log into a website, it texts you a code uh, to like make sure that you're the approved user or maybe your airline texts you because your flight is delayed. Uh, maybe Amazon texts you because your package was shipped but actually using SMS as like a commercial channel to advertise through and to market through is still really, really early. So there's lots and lots of people building SMS businesses right now. It's really, really crowded, uh, but we have like a very focused perspective and that has what's led to all our insights, like utilizing it specifically for e-commerce marketing. Yeah, I feel like that, you know, when there is an apparent market pull, you know, there that demand is is kind of met with supply and all these people build companies um, for a space. But I think, you know, as you mentioned, you're doing it right and that your niche, you, you have a niche and you know exactly who you're targeting, you know exactly who you're not targeting. Uh, so I, that, that that's very interesting. I'm kind of wondering a, a little bit of the history and then we'll go you know into forward looking but when did you like did you always know that sms that that channel was an opportunity and if not like you know at what point were you like oh there's an opportunity here i'd love to do something with this sure so before starting postscript uh 
I worked with Adam Turner, one of my two co-founders at a big e-commerce company. And we experienced there a lot of the like macro trends that are going on in e-commerce firsthand. So email engagement has been slowly declining for years and mobile traffic has been slowly increasing for years as a percentage of overall traffic. Those aren't very like insightful things. Now everyone just accepts and knows those two facts about the internet. But if you think about that at this e-commerce company, we were really interested in like, what is the mobile first retention channel? If email is the way that every single e-commerce business drives customers to come back and buy over and over again, and that channel isn't relevant for mobile traffic or isn't as relevant for mobile traffic, like what is the mobile first retention channel? What is email for phone, for the phone? And so we didn't, when we started down this path and uh, Adam and his brother Colin, my other co-founder had already been building this product and like had uh, been working on this before they approached me about it. Um, I think they were trying to just like solve a, a problem that a friend of theirs had. A friend of theirs ran a Shopify store. He complained that he couldn't text their customers. Like really like a classic like startup moment. And so they wanted to build a little product that did that. But I don't think any of us, despite having the relevant experience in e-commerce, none of us knew like how big and clear the opportunity was for a real SaaS business until we were in the weeds and actually like working with customers. First, we thought like, oh, this will be a passive niche product. Um, We had no idea how big the opportunity was. And, you know, now what do you what do you see in front of you like you 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 recognize how big the opportunity is i'm sure actually i have one question about your recent experience you know going through y combinator did y combinator help you actually see the magnitude of of the opportunity or was it did that just like help i guess did it did yc play at all in how you see the market or was it all just the founders you know vision and and learning from the users sure uh yes to all of that So YC is like the best thing we've ever done. Um, It was incredibly helpful for getting us to like uh, move quickly and mentorship and um, like access to partnerships. I mean, everything about YC was great. We were in a slightly different situation that we came in already with a business model and already with paying customers. So for us, it was like, let's grow really, really quickly. When, when we hit there, it was less like looking for product market fit and more trying to ramp up into it when we arrived at YC. So to answer your question, uh, they definitely helped us hone our like vision for the market more tightly. But when we arrived there, it was already clear that like, oh, this is a giant market um, and we have a product that works. So they helped us hone it, but we also knew going in. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like the best founders always, you know, have the best idea on on the market, and they, there's always mentorship that is needed, you know, to to help refine and whatnot. But um, yeah, that makes total sense to me. Uh, so cool. Let's look a little forward. So you know, you you've talked about what you what you've built and what you're building. Um, you've talked about the market what does the next I have a two prong question for you? You know, you've had some, some really good growth in the last year. I'm curious, where do you see PostScript going in the short term, let's say for the next two years uh, and some of the use cases that people can use with PostScript, but then like kind of expanding the mind a little bit, you know, what could, how big could this get? And more so not how big could it get, but like what could people do with the technology that you're building and the platform that you're building in, in 10 years from now, what are the possibilities? Yeah. So in the next couple of years, there's an incredible amount of room for us to run with being like the uh, messaging marketing platform for e-commerce. E-commerce is like absolutely booming. Right now we have a focus on Shopify. There are also like many other platforms out there and many other e-commerce businesses. So e-commerce as like a macro industry is growing. Um, We want to be like the absolute best tool for um, for like SMS marketing automation within that niche. And so there's so, so much room to run there that for a long time, we're going to be focused on like solving that 
problem and like building the absolute best toolkit to also help brands cut through the noise of the space. So, and this sort of takes to the 10 year vision. So one thing about marketing tools is that whenever there's a new like marketing channel that opens up, the tools all tend to start at the same V1 and then slowly evolve and get smarter. So the best example of this is email where when email started, there weren't like, uh, there wasn't automation, there weren't target, there wasn't targeting. It was like you had an email list and everyone got the exact same message on it at the exact same moment, right? And now uh, everything is tailored based off user actions and like preferences and like your get the gap is sending you emails based on like things you viewed on their site and like what they know about your demographics from following your actions like around the web. Everything is incredibly targeted and sophisticated. And so doing that on SMS, when SMS is fundamentally a different channel, we're trying to start at that level of sophistication. And so for a long time, we're going to be working on like building out just an incredible marketing suite that makes it very easy for e-com stores to monetize. Even longer term, there's interesting things that are different with SMS than, than email, where there, first of all, there's other messaging channels beyond SMS, but also... The fact that users can respond to text messaging in ways that they don't to email makes it really interesting long term. Where, uh, like perhaps using AI or ML at some point in the future, uh, brands will be just like corresponding directly via text, and like uh, all purchasing and all customer support will happen within a single single conversational thread. The PostScript will power, and all of that will be like hands off and automatic. So. There's a very long roadmap for us while still focusing on our core niche. It's the the art and the science of entrepreneurship of of you know the science of make growing now and the art of knowing where you're going tomorrow. So I love that. Uh, that's that's awesome. So you're you, you seem to have a. Like, honestly, a great position going into you know the the future in this realm, t t tackling you know the e-commerce market, Shopify with SMS mar uh, SS SMS tools and a suite. So that's one industry that you you know have spent a lot of time thinking about. You know, I'm sure you know the last year that, that that's kind of it. I'm curious, what other industries? Do you maybe not spend much time thinking about, but like interest you, like like, like other companies uh, in other industries? Like, what what are things that uh, pique your interest outside of what you're working in every day? Oh man, there's a ton. So uh, I think there's so many interesting use cases for SMS in particular. I'll start there and then I'll go brighter. So uh, I have a bunch of family that works in insurance and like claim adjusting, and I'm constantly talking to them about like SMS applications for the insurance space and like customer correspondence via SMS to improve the customer experience. That's really interesting to me. Uh, also, there's a bunch of cool companies out there right now building uh, like tools for sales professionals with SMS. Because, and I think that's really interesting because for me, I'm essentially a B2B salesperson. That's what we do at PostScript. And I close so many deals over text because I've learned that like that's how people want to correspond. It's their preferred form of communication. So there's some really cool companies in that space as well um, that are doing cool stuff there. Uh, I think about e-commerce a lot because that's what we work in. I'm like fascinated by not only the rise of like targeted marketing, but how e-commerce is evolving in general, where like with DT, with direct to consumer brands taking over, there's become this larger and larger emphasis on like brand experience, quality products, uh, a cohesive marketing strategy as opposed to what's been going on for the last five years, which is like, how do we arbitrage Facebook, right? Like how do we put in a dollar and get a buck 20 back? And like things are moving towards this brand first orientation, like away luggage is like the perfect example of that, like not a focus on performance marketing. So those are some things that I touch on a lot that interest me. Um, another thing that was cool to see in Y Combinator was just an emphasis of like companies on like environmentalism and on green energy. And like that was, that's a personal passion of mine. So that got me excited as well. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think about a year ago, maybe a little more, didn't YC put out a pretty extensive, maybe it's YC research, but they put out an extensive like call for uh, companies uh, in in that realm at helping with global warming. And, you know, and, and I think it actually Sam Altman wrote it. I know he's not the president anymore, but at the time, he like, they created this giant webpage to call all these companies to come through YC so they can fund them and help them grow. Is there uh, is there a, like an environmentalism or like a global warming solution almost like track in YC or is there just a a good amount of companies working on that problem that get support from YC? I think the latter. I'm not sure. I, you could be right. I, I don't know. Um, but it definitely seems to be a growing thing, and they're approaching it with this the same mindset they always do, which is like building great companies. Um, yeah. So it's very like capitalist first angle. Um, oh, I have one other uh, personal call for a startup that yeah. I want to, a personal one. It's and it's SMS focused as well. So I used to work in media, like online publishing, and I think that there are going to be enormous businesses built there with SMS. So SMS is this incredibly high engagement channel, and like you know how email lists are becoming in vogue again. Everyone's like building a personal email news newsletter. It used to be a blog and now it's this. I think building a personal SMS list, mm. people opted in to like a specific niche that want, whether it's like local news and tips about like things to do in LA, right? I live in LA where I get a text three times a week or, um, you know, recommendations of like, like a coffee of the week text. Cause I'm a coffee head, like whether it's product, whether it's news, I think SMS, because it's so high engagement, like there will be a huge company built catering SMS to like news and online media to help build a specific tool set for online publications to grow and scale an SMS list. Um, so that's something that I'm like very interested in seeing as well. Talking to you is a very fascinating kind of insight into that world. Uh, you know, I, I haven't spent much time thinking about SMS and the opportunity there. And there's obviously a lot and a whole ecosystem that's being built, which is pretty cool to know. And I might like, you know, do a little more research and whatnot in it and see how yeah. I can leverage it for my company. You know, that, that's, that's awesome. It's, it's interesting because Twilio built the like ground layer and all the Twilio's competitors. And now all these applications can be built on top of it, where if you think about with email, they are different channels, but if it, that's the closest comparison, there have been, there's probably f over the, history of time, there's probably been $50 billion email companies, right? Like it's yeah. really different. I mean, right. Oracle probably owns like four of them now over the last 20 <laughs> years. And there, like, there will be many billion dollar SMS companies. Um, just like focusing on different use cases and focusing on different niches and like building out all the infrastructure around that. So uh, I think it's very early for, messaging communication and like we're just getting started where do you see so you just mentioned that you know you think there's going to be several billion dollar companies in the sms you know industry which makes total sense as each targeting kind of a different need in the market i'm kind of interested is there anything that you've noticed in the sms market or in you know the messaging market that you think there should be companies built around where no one not many people are really focusing on is there any gaps in the market Totally. Uh, like what I just mentioned, I see as a huge gap in like yeah. publishing and media space. Okay. Um, that is a really big one. I also think that there are some like Twilio competitors out there. I think we'll see a few like large direct competitors come out against Twilio within the next few years, like successful ones that actually like get traction. And the reason is because the like, good thing about SMS and why people like it is that it's not built on it. Someone else. It's not built on someone's platform. So like Facebook messenger, you're playing by Facebook's rules. SMS is like an open landscape, right? It's similar to email in that way. It's an open protocol, but the downside of it is that you're working with legacy tech systems. You're working with T-Mobile and AT&T's technical infrastructure, which as you imagine is like not very strong. So, there's going to be a lot more infrastructure companies built too, just improving like what it is to send a text. 
Do you, uh, there's this company that went through YC, not in your batch, it had to be a couple of batches before you, called Open Phone, where they're trying to, like, they're, like, from what I know about them, they're trying to, like, I think it's, like, build a whole, like, a Verizon, but, but like, techno- technology, techno- technology first. Um, do you, like, do you see, this is kind of my last question in this realm, um, because it's just fascinating to me. Do you see, like... Again, I know very little about this stuff, but like Verizon, T-Mobile, you know, AT&T, they kind of feel like these dinosaurs in some capacity that are just there and like they're never going to go away. Do you see many companies competing, like competing with them or are they kind of, they're kind of just it? <laughs> yeah, they're kind of it. And there's a limited amount of wireless spectrum and data spectrum out there. So they own the spectrum. So they're like, it's hard to, like I can't launch a startup in that space, right? They uh, they own the wireless spectrum. Um, I'm interested to see if any of the large tech incumbents can make a true play there. Like Google Fi has been growing a bit, and that's been Google's push. Maybe that becomes something. But uh, yeah, I- I'm not sure if we'll see that. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool, man. <laughs> well, I have a I've two I have two more questions for you and then we'll we'll about wrap it up so is my my second last question is you know you just spent you know three months at yc you're in la which is a start which is a pretty hot startup hub i'm, a, I'm kind of guessing that you see a lot of you know cool stuff being built within sms and outside of sms uh and and that kind of stuff i'm kind of curious if you were an investor and you, you know, you, you had a hundred K, you know, to, to, to invest into a company who of, you know, who, who would you put money into, or what are this couple of months, couple companies that you think most people don't know about that you think are going to be big one day or impactful one day that could be as early, you know, as an idea, as late as late stage revenue, but someone that you believe in, you know, that's going to go big. Trying to think of the personal tools that that I use and love. Yeah. God, there's so many good personal tools, man. Oh my gosh. That's like, that's a whole industry in itself. I mean, it's late stage. I don't think this is, this is innovative from an investment perspective at all, but like Stripe is obviously an incredible tool and they built an amazing company. Um, uh, The email app, front Mm. um, for team inboxes is like a very impressive product that I keep seeing people really like it. Um, So it seems like users are just huge fans of it. Um, Are you familiar with their CEO, Matilda, I believe? Her, the content she puts out is extraordinary. She's a very inspirational, you know, younger founder, uh, you know, and definitely inspires me. She's like, I, I don't know how old she is, which I know she's, you know, she's newer in her career and she's just destroying it in a good way. Like she's just she's ripping it up with front and she's leading, you know, this company into, into stardom. I think it's awesome. It, it's great. I actually, I've adopted some of her practices for um, managing one-on-ones and it's been, mm. it's been like a great infrastructure to operate from. In a good yeah, for sure. For sure. Cool, man. Well, I have uh, one last question uh, before we wrap it up. So you, uh, multiple times in this in this episode uh, have mentioned you know how big the market is you, that you're working in and and you know how postscript is meeting the demand and and you're 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 pretty much building the future with with postscript which is really exciting there's a lot of people listening to this episode that maybe want to build something that that changes the world or build something that changes one person's world and just want to like get started you know building product and and doing something big uh, you know, what advice would you have for them, uh, for someone who just wants to do something big and, and build the future, but maybe doesn't know like the first step? Sure. So what I would say is uh, look around where you work for people that you really, really deeply respect uh, and that focus on something different than you and try to collaborate with them. That's like the who. I think like co-founders and having co-founders could not, that's like step number one and it's the most important thing there is. Having strong co-founders that you trust and believe in, that's like number one. Um, The second thing is 
like looking for problems. And the two specific tips I have for that is look around your workplace and think about what gaps your current company that you work for experiences. Where have they had to build little custom hacks or like little custom spreadsheets for to fix an internal problem? Go to your friends' offices, like watching and seeing where businesses have problems, which by the way, all businesses, all they have are problems. And like trying to build products that like solve things that you're seeing, that's a great place to start. The other one is just like keeping ears open. So in the case of PostScript, right? Getting off the ground because someone who ran a Shopify store was complaining to us that he couldn't text his customers and he couldn't find a good solution for that. Like that sort of straightforward problem for us has been a great launching point. Those are the three. Oh yeah. Did you add one more thing? As opposed to like a top down mindset of like, Oh, e-commerce is a huge market. Like what can I make in e-commerce? It was very, very, very like a bottoms up approach and it gave us focus from the start and that's been helpful for us. Yeah. That's honestly really helpful, helpful uh, advice and feedback, you know, for people listening, those are three of the best steps that I could think of to start to as well. So thank you for that. And thank you, Alex, for coming on to the Forward Thinking Founders podcast. I, I really appreciate you spending your time and you know, chatting for the last 30 minutes. Sure. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, you got it. And for the for the listeners, thank you all for spending you know 30 minutes of your time tuning in. I'll talk to you all next week. Hope you all have a good one.